Now, my goal for this presentation is to play that devil's advocate, to play that person in the room offering that contrarian approach, contrarian idea, and to offer alternative paths that are also interesting to look into to achieve the same types of things that have all caught the attention of everyone at this conference. I can tell you my goal is not to be this guy, to be the grumpy guy that just yells at the cloud and yells at technology, but rather to further the discussion, because I think what everyone would agree with on this topic is it is pushing the industry in a certain direction. And we do this in the industry all the time. We go from centralization to decentralization, back and forth all the time. And we are clearly on one of the new parts of those cycles. And I think without a doubt, data mesh will take over as a new paradigm to take us into new scalability points, to improve simplicity. But what I'd like to talk to you about today is after implementing this with three of our customers, what was our experience? For me, there are four main topics and takeaways that I would like to bring to this discussion. The first is how in this quest for us to always look at the things that we are missing at our business, data, data you know, discoverability, easy access to domains, data that's ready to use, often what we forget is by moving to that new paradigm what we could actually lose. I've got a couple of examples of how in our implementations we rolled back parts of the data mesh because we realize what we already had in place, we did not want to lose. The other topic I'd like to quash is this idea that centralization is a bad thing. And I think that this is the wrong way to be talking about this conversation. What we found implementing data mesh, and these are big companies, these are over 100,000 employees, large, complex, global entities, you would know all these brand names well, that centralization was not the issue. It was bottlenecks that was the issue. And they are something worth addressing. I think, I think the most contentious piece within this presentation, or at least maybe the one that will, that stood out to us in implementing data mesh that was so apparent across as a theme, across all the implementations, was that in its current inception, the data mesh is really only implementable by the top tier companies in the world. And I'm talking about the 0.01%. And I hate to be the one to say it, but that's probably not you. And finally, when we talk about decentralization, often we also talk about abstraction. And when we came to implement the data mesh with these customers, we realized there is already an abundance of abstraction and decentralization that is already available to us today. And a lot of that already existed with the cloud movement. So to have this discussion in a constructive way, I'd like us to all drop all of these keywords for a moment, data mesh, data fabric, modern MDM, let's drop it for a moment. What are we actually trying to fix and address at our businesses? With the companies that we talk to in the scope of data mesh, it usually comes down to this. The reason why you're here at Big Data London is because you think something is missing. There is a void or a chasm that exists within your business. And whether that's technology or culture or process, something is missing. And we've all been good citizens. We have bought the best cloud services. We've implemented BI. We've done ML. We've done lake houses. 
warehouses, lakes, you name it. We've hired the best in the industry for data engineering and for data science, but something still feels like it's missing. That's why you're here. That's why we're looking into concepts like data mesh in the first place. Of course, uh, you've had plenty of sessions today that talk you through what data mesh is and what it's supposed to achieve. That's not what I'm here to do. If we break down the four main pillars of the data mesh and the value that it's supposed to bring, there are two elements of, or pillars on this that I think are pushing the industry in the right direction. And that is very much about thinking about data in domains. Why? Because it is the next level of abstraction that is closer to the business. The business does not want to be thinking in files, tables, systems, and assets. We want to be thinking in easily consumable domains. The distribution of ownership of this is pushing us in the right direction. Data as a product is also exactly what we should be doing in the industry. We are all consumers. If we take something like Netflix, I think we would all argue that the content is the product. But without the services around it facilitate high SLAs, that, remote, that button we've got on all of our remote controls by default, an amazing app experience, fast speed, new content all the time, recommendation engines that may or may not work depending on your opinion. These are all the services around it that make the content, the core product actually work. And exactly the same thing happens with data. For those of you who have not got to the point in your data technology stack where you're giving data out to the business, the first thing happens if it's just the data is that without the services, it fails. Without describing where the data came from and what journey it had to get there, without data quality scores, without all of those services, the data cannot survive. The self-serve platform, for me, I would argue that this is a given in the cloud. The cloud has already brought this to us that we have the ability to distribute processing, compute, storage across cloud providers. And this is nothing necessarily new that you're already thinking about already in your technology stack. And the next one for me is where it all came down. Federated governance. In principle, decentralization is that natural abstraction point of scalability. The reason why we decentralize is because we can usually horizontally scale and grow in an amicable way and not become that bottleneck. But this is the argument. Decentralization is fine. Centralization is not a bad thing. There will always be a healthy combination of both of these. They will always play a role in fulfilling this data stack. But actually, in reality, with the companies that we work with, most of them are finding it hard enough to find people for one team, let alone a distributed team managing governance, quality, master data management, all of these pieces across the stack. And for me, this is where the pillars start to topple. But many parts of the discussion do lead a good project. These are some of the pillars we will be talking about in many years to come. But many businesses are still so far away from actually benefiting in an immense ROI from implementing a data mesh. <clears throat> I, borrowed this, um, I borrowed this slide from our colleagues at Microsoft. Microsoft talk a lot about the data mesh and a lot of people inquire to them, how could I build a data mesh on Microsoft technology? And the kind of discussions that they have are this. They're wanting to find out if a data mesh is actually what you're wanting. And they do this by asking, is this the problems that you're actually having? If you tick a lot of these boxes, then data mesh might be a really approachable, appropriate thing for you to implement. Now, us being cheeky, if we then skip over to what is the idea of, of modern data management, 
modern master data management, it's the same thing. Modern MDM is tasked with solving the same thing. And it's not academic, it's not a theory, it's not a framework, it's not evolving. Modern MDM is here today and it is solving the same complexities that we're wanting to solve by approaching this with a data mesh. But let's be honest, no one, no one these days joins university and says, what do I want to be when I grow up? I want to get into MDM. No one does. MDM is the most boring category in data full stop, traditionally. And this is why no one wanted to get into it. This is the anatomy of a typical MDM project. Where the first thing that happens after you buy this technology is you turn it off for the first six months. You turn it off and you grab our friend Excel and you go out to the business and you start to figure out what you would like a customer to look like, what you would like a product to look like, and how they will relate to each other. Six months later, when the system is still not turned on, you come to the business, they sign off on that information model, and you bring it back to IT. And then IT spend the next six months trying to bend that data in your ecosystem into something that's probably not even able to be achieved. 12 months have gone past, the business comes back and says, how's the MDM project going? And your answer is, well, we've got data in the platform. I don't blame anyone for shying away from MDM. And why was it complex? For a couple of key critical reasons. Number one, you had to figure out how your data looked like up front. You had to manually figure out how it all connected together. And you would hope that lasted three, five years. So don't bring on any more systems. Don't acquire any companies because we've defined this rigid model that the world has to fit into, sometimes globally. And the irony of MDM was, MDM was supposed to be about bringing the business to a technology layer. Engineers, like me, have Databricks. We have Snowflake, we have DBT, we have ADF, we have Synapse. They're targeted towards us. MDM is for the business, but still most of these MDM solutions are implemented and operated by IT, still. I don't want to use your tools. I've got tools targeted towards my persona, but what you find is that IT cannot fix everything. And we were always working towards the limitations of the software. Master data is only about your critical business objects. Don't put too much data in. Only structured data makes sense for MDM. Utter rubbish. What's important for a business today, their critical data spans across invoices, PDFs, unstructured, transactional, IoT data, and that structured data as well. And all of this meant a slow time to market, a slow time to value. 24 months went by, and I'll tell you what everybody else in your teams did. They moved on because they've got their own KPIs to hit, and they're not going to wait 24 months for you to approach this with big bang. It'll be great when it's released. They have moved on. Cluded is a, um, a Microsoft partner. In fact, we're Microsoft's recommended MDM solution globally. And as part of this, we've been implementing the data mesh style using the Microsoft Azure stack. To be specific, something called the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform. It's a mouthful. And I just want to show you some of the pieces that we stitched together to essentially yield exactly what the data mesh is wanting to yield. Data products, discoverable data, data that's ready for insight, domains that can scale in ownership and in processing. Let's dive over and take a look at what that looks like. So here is our Azure Data Lake. 
No, it's not. That is a slide. That is a data lake. Azure Data Factory is used to pull data from across all the operational systems, CRMs, ERPs, you name it. Land it in one single store. Centralization sounds bad. No, this scales endlessly. Endlessly. Maybe it's hard to manage. Do you need data mesh for that? No. Access control. <laughs> We've had that for a very long time, and it's a very natural way to slice data that maybe could overwhelm people if this was filled with thousands of files, which in a data lake, eventually it does get to. Now, it's great knowing that we have all our data in one place, in one ubiquitous format, but this is definitely not for the business users. And that's where Microsoft Purview comes in as the cataloging piece. It not only tells us what data that we have, but then it gives us some governance pillars of ownership. But still, there's the complexity. When we search within our catalog for products, I've got 16 product tables and 16 product parquet files. So glad that I know what data that we actually have, but we're still not talking in domains. We're talking files and tables. And this is where Cluedin comes in. Cluedin is an MDM platform about consolidating files and tables into domains. So no matter what we call the columns in different systems, no matter what the tables are called, we need to migrate from talking files and tables into domains. And this is one of the core principles of that data mesh, something we very much agree with because domains are more consumable from the business. So instead of consuming from the data catalog files and um, tables, now in purview for our customers, they're consuming domains, customers, that have already been merged, already been linked, already been harmonized with full lineage of how that happened and consumable with something called Azure Data Share. That's the way that it's publicized and discoverable to the business. Because it's great that I have this catalog to search, but think about how you learn about things. It's not about you randomly Googling things. Things are pushed to you. They're sold to you. They're advertised to you. Azure Data Share is that public thing that allows data to be that much more discoverable. And of course, for actually generating the insights, for generating all the BI, we now have tools like Synapse and Databricks to be able to pull that together. Now, how do we compose all these domains together? Because that's hard to link between domains and even within own domains as well. Behind the scenes of Cluedin is a graph database, something that's extremely good at mapping relationships between and across different domains. And the key here is in MDM, it's no longer about trying to conform to a specific model. The core value of modern MDM is having records link and merge in an automated way. And that accelerates these projects immensely. So the technology stack that we used compromised or, or composed of these different pieces to cover off all the use cases. Discoverability, that was done through Purview. Integration across domains, that was done with Cluedin. Decentralization of storage and compute, there is no need. I remember this hilarious moment with a pharmaceutical company where we were just about to spin up all this different, we were about to replicate this infrastructure across the domains. And one of the ladies in the governance team said, why don't we just solve this with access control? And we literally just saved a million, close to a million dollars in infrastructure by slicing it in different ways that already exist today. But this is the stack that allowed these customers to yield the value of a of a data mesh. Now, of course, there were lots of things that we learned. We learned this. Well, yeah, we learned that. That, I can't forget those moments. That was a good one. Oh, that was a bad day yet yeah, when that happened. These were the good parts. 
Yeah, they were also good. Yep, they, yeah, I remember that day as well. There is so much to talk about with the data mesh. Sorry? Cheers. <clears throat> so many things to talk about. F feedback, input, facts that were realized, things that we rolled back. And so I thought I would boil it down to this six core elements that was the theme across all of these customers. And the first is this. When we go to split, split up data at a domain level, here's a guarantee. Domains across domains will never fit together in a uniform way. This is why achieving a canonical model is so hard. Because as you bring on new systems, you acquire new customers, there's absolutely no way for you to predict up front of what domain groups there should be. That changes over time. The other thing is whatever gets decentralized has to at some point, I'm going to use the word orchestrated. Not centralized, but orchestrated. As we split things apart, they have to be composed together at some point. And in the engineering space, we did that with uh, Kubernetes and Docker containers. We split up into microservices, but Kubernetes still orchestrates and potentially centralizes the management of it. So coming with decentralization will always come centralization as well. The other thing I think was the most valuable is that all these projects, I would say, were data mesh led. They were data mesh inspired. We didn't use it as a Bible, but we thought we used it as great discussion points to make sure, were we thinking about this? Were we thinking about this? And that domain-driven thinking that comes from ThoughtWorks and comes from the software development industry, it's a great way to make sure we're not causing bottlenecks in our data architecture. We always made sure that wherever we were putting in abstraction points, we could always scale those horizontally with people, compute, um, and storage if necessary. So, um, there is no data mesh technology. Everybody knows that. There is no data mesh technology. It is a framework. It is a guide. Um, there are many pieces of technology that can already be wired together today to maybe get you 90% of the way there. And my argument is that the data mesh is so complex to implement that the ROI for that extra 10% is not worth it yet. In time, it will be. Because those four pillars are the next natural abstraction point for complex global businesses, but not yet. The final piece I just wanted to touch on is that teams don't scale like technology. And they are some of the principles that are talked about in this theory around data mesh. That through federated governance, we'll have domain ownership, maybe at a group level, maybe eventually at a singular level, and somehow that humans will be composable like technology. And I think you all know that's not the truth. Teams don't scale like technology. Will it eventually? Potentially, when data mesh frameworks come out, when maybe more technology comes out to help and aid us in scaling this. But this is one of the things that is most complex, I think, to solve in business, is scaling these teams out. At Cludin, we are a Microsoft MDM platform. We are also the recommended migration away from Microsoft's old MDS system, Master Data Services. So very much look forward to uh, talking about uh, Cludin and MDM and Data Mesh at our booth at 6.30. And uh, if there's any questions, I'd love to answer them. Thank you.